Superhero costumes are supposed to look cool. The Flash's iconic red suit is no exception. The yellow lightning accents and the mercury wings on the cowl just scream speed. This unique costume has become the character's trademark on the comics page. However, some efforts to bring this look into live action have been more successful than others. Who remembers the red hoodie from Smallville? Or the sculpted muscle suit from the 1990s TV show? Thankfully, the artists who create these looks have found new ways to use their tools of the trade to make these costumes come to life. Hey folks, and welcome to The Binger. Today we're going to look at the most memorable costumes in the live-action history of The Flash. In the comics, Bart Allen was the grandson of Barry Allen. He was raised in a virtual reality environment in the 30th century, then brought back in time to fight crime along with the Flash and Young Justice. Bert's reckless behavior and disregard for danger earned him the code name Impulse. On the comics page, the Impulse costume combined elements of all the major characters to carry the Flash name. On the small screen, the Impulse suit showed about as much imagination as a bored middle schooler. Bart made his first appearance in Season 4 of Smallville, along with versions of Green Arrow, Aquaman, and Cyborg. The show's creators established a rule to keep the superhero show grounded in reality. No flights and no tights. While this rule may have helped to make the characters relatable to mere mortals, it also robbed the show of the chance to push the envelope. Case in point, dressing the fastest kid alive in a red hoodie, cheap sunglasses, and red pants you could find at any mall in America. At the other extreme, the short-lived 1990 Flash live-action TV show went over the top with its attention to detail. The show was coming off the success of the 1989 film Batman, which featured Michael Keaton in a sculpted rubber suit. So producers decided that sculpted muscles were the way to go with a character known more for his speed than his brawn. The four suits cost an average of $25,000 each in 1990, the equivalent of nearly $50,000 in 2019. Actor John Wesley Shipp played the title character and had to endure wearing the iconic but uncomfortable suits. Costume designers had to glue the suit onto Ship's body, then remove the glue with acetone, irritating his skin and causing the costume to wear out faster. Ship told Den of Geek, the suit was crumbling. I didn't have a cooling unit for the pilot episode, which we shot in May and June in LA. So I'd be in it for 10 minutes, I take off the glove and it would literally be filled up with sweat. August Hart was a scientific genius from the year 2049. His obsession with Hunter Zolomon, who would later go on to become the Flash villain Zoom, spurred him to create a way to obtain super speed powers for himself. He experimented with faster than light particles, called tachyons, to give him super speed. He learned that he could enhance his powers by using the drug Velocity 9. So he tried to steal the ingredients. Hart's criminal activities made him run afoul of that era's super speed hero Nora West Allen, better known as Excess. Hart also created an all-white suit that contained design elements reminiscent of a certain Scarlet Speedster. The full-body suit features several gold lightning accents, much like the Flash's traditional costume. However, the Godspeed suit also has a full face mask, rather than the usual cowl and protective coverings over the eye holes. The white suit also feeds into Hart's egomania, as he sees himself as the God of Speed. Much like the other speedsters in the Flash universe, Godspeed can generate lightning effects with a distinctive color. Although Velocity 9 users typically spark off blue bolts, Godspeed can whip off white lightning slashes across the central city skies. Computers, TVs, and cell phones aren't the only things that are likely to see upgrades in the next five years. The Season 3 episode, The Once and Future Flash, gave viewers a glimpse into the future with Barry's new costume. While Barry's previous red suits protected him from the friction that his high speeds generate, the suit from 2024 came with some added features. Cisco Ramon, the engineering genius of Team Flash, installed several new capabilities into the costume. These features include a self-destruct device and a deadlock switch that prevents the Flash's enemies from learning his secret identity. The look of the futuristic costume also moved closer to that of the classic comics, in that it used a brighter shade of red and thicker yellow lightning bolts. Thanks to his future self and the rest of 2024's Team Flash, Barry was able to bring the suit back to 2017. The new suit became the baseline suit used through most of Season 4. At the end of that season, the suit was destroyed when the Flash laid the supersonic smackdown on the Thinker's Enlightenment satellite. 
While the small screen version of the Scarlet Speedster relies on Team Flash for his gear, his big screen counterpart made his flashy gear on his own. In 2017's Justice League, billionaire Bruce Wayne learned about how young Barry Allen developed a suit for, as Barry called it, very competitive ice dancing. While the TV Flash's costume is mostly a one-piece suit, the DCEU Speedster's costume consists of many parts. The primary material is a silica-based quartz composite, the same material used in the heat shielding the space shuttle. The material not only protects Barry from heat friction that his high speeds produce, but it also protects him from extreme cold. This type of protection can come in handy when facing villains like Captain Cold and Killer Frost. The suit consists of armor plates over the vital areas, such as the head, torso, and extremities, all over a flexible layer that covers the joints. The combination gives this version of the Flash protection where it counts, while still giving him the freedom of movement he needs. Although the look strays from the classic style of the comic's character, it works well on the big screen. At first glance, the reverse Flash suit appears to be exactly what it says, a reverse image of the original Flash's costume. Where the Flash has a red suit with yellow lightning bolts, reverse Flash has a yellow suit with red lightning bolt. While the villain's color choices show his direct antagonism to the heroes, those colors don't tell the whole story. Before Eobar Thawn would become reverse Flash, he started as an obsessed fan of the Central City Speedster. In his native 22nd century, Thawn used advanced technology to recreate the accident that gave Barry Allen his super speed. Thawne also incorporated some of that technology into his suit. Thawne included a holographic interface that let him communicate with Gideon, an artificial intelligence hosted at Star Labs. The suit is also made from a leathery material, rather than the lighter fabrics found in later versions of the Flash suit. The sinister super speedster Savitar used a different approach when it came to costuming. Instead of using flexible materials to allow for freedom of movement, Savitar uses a suit of armor to protect him from the ravages of super speed. The Savitar armor also protects the wearer from most weapons, including bullets. The suit can also project blades from its wrists, fire static electricity, and enhance the wearer's strength. The Savitar armor doesn't even need to have a live body inside it. The wearer can establish a mental connection with the suit, allowing the user to operate the suit remotely. The armor also changes color depending on the wearer. When Savitar wore the armor, a blue glow suffused behind the eyes and ribs. When Barry took control of the suit, a red glow filtered through the same areas. While the suit started as a CGI creation, later episodes featured a practical costume that actors could wear like a genuine suit of armor. In many ways, the Savitar armor works much like the red and gold suits from a certain billionaire genius playboy philanthropist at another comic book company. While the 1990s TV series was the first time John Wesley's ship donned the Flash costume, it wouldn't be the last. Ship started out playing Henry Allen, Barry's father who was strongly convicted in his wife's demise. After reprising his role as the 1990 Flash in the Elseworlds Arrowverse crossover, Ship returned to the series as Jay Garrick. The Jay Garrick Flash also had an iconic costume, complete with a metal helmet and red pullover emblazoned with a yellow lightning bolt. The signature helmet featured wings on each side, an image reminiscent of artwork depicting Mercury, the Roman god of speed. This version of the Flash can use the helmet to block bullets and create sonic blasts by pummeling the crown with high-speed punches. The TV costume also features a red zip-up leather top, a gold belt, blue pants, and red boots, all of which look more comfortable than Ship's 1990 gear. As in the comics, the introduction of Jay Garrick to the mainstream Arrowverse spawned the idea of the multiverse. That multiverse will apparently come to an end in the upcoming Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover. While costume designers always have to create suits that work in the real world, the Kid Flash suit comes very close to the look of its source material. Much like in the comics, the Kid Flash suit takes some of its visual cues from both the Flash and Reverse Flash. The top half of the suit uses the yellow base color and the red lightning bolt from Flash's arch nemesis. Meanwhile, the bottom half maintains the signature red with yellow accents from the Flash's costume. Both versions also feature a cutout at the top of the head, leaving the wearer's hair free to blow in the supersonic breeze. In the Flashpoint timeline, Wally West was that universe's Flash, while wearing the suit styled after the comics Kid Flash. During a battle with the Super Speedster rival, Wally's original costume was destroyed. When Barry restored the timeline, Wally also lost his powers, then regained them when he touched the Philosopher's Stone. After regaining his powers, his friends and family gave him a new costume that resembled the one he lost. As the Flash TV show has progressed throughout its five-plus seasons, the Flash costume has also moved closer to the style seen in the comics. The costume for Season 6 combines many of the elements that worked in earlier versions while removing many of those that didn't. Audiences will notice one of the biggest differences in the design of the cowl. First off, the color comes across on screen as much brighter than those seen in previous versions. 
The color also comes closer to matching the rest of the costume, where earlier designs had a cowl noticeably darker than the bodysuit. The material also appears to be more flexible than the hard leather or plastic seen in earlier versions. Instead of laying flush to the cowl, the new wings protrude out from the sides of Barry's head, serving as a tribute to the Jay Garrick Flash. The question remains, will this costume or its wearer survive the upcoming Crisis on Infinite Earths? Stay tuned to find out. So what do you think? Are there any other Flash costumes that belong on this list? Let us know in the comments! Be sure to like this video, share it with your Flash fan friends, and subscribe to The Binger to get notified about our latest videos. And as always, thanks for watching.